How you guys doing? I'm Kent Tilly and welcome to the channel. And today I want to talk to you about the new uh, tax brackets that are, that are coming into effect in 2022. And this changes every single year. So there's a few numbers that change every single year. Uh, they set them before the year starts. So one of the things they always set is, you know, the new TFSA limit. So every time that inflation catches up, then the TFSA limit is going to go up by an extra five hundred dollars. Uh, right now in 2022 it's going to be six thousand but i would suspect based on inflation this year next year they'll probably increase the inflation or the tfsa limit to 6500 another number that they set is ympe which is the yearly maximum maximum pensionable earnings which has to do with how much money you put into cpp so in 2022 that's going to be 64,900. So in order to max out your CPP contributions, you need to make that much money. If you make above that much money, you're no longer going to be actually contributing to CPP anymore. And now I'm not going to go through every single province because, you know, that would just take me forever to go through every province. So today I've chosen Ontario for a couple of reasons. One, a lot of people from Ontario seem to watch this channel. Thank you very much. And two, I kind of have a bone to pick with Ontario in particular with their taxes and how they tax their citizens. And then they pretend that they're all for, you know, the working class, uh, which they definitely don't seem to be, in my opinion. Maybe I'll talk about that at a later date. Um, what I'm going to get Ryan to do at the end of the video is to put up every province's new tax bracket. Every province. So if you watch this video, then you can understand how they work and then go to the end of, it, of the video, find your province, and then look at your new t combined federal and provincial tax brackets because the federal government plus your province have their own tax brackets. They don't match up at all. Different provinces tax at different rates in different brackets. So every single province is way different, which is kind of annoying because it's really hard to actually keep track. And each province has like way more tax brackets than I personally think that they need. Um, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, the place where I check is I will just Google you know, Ontario combined tax brackets. One of the first things that comes up is taxtips.ca. It's really easy once you click off the ad that comes up to look and find your tax brackets there. If I was gonna calculate or use a, an actual tax calculator, I like the Ernst & Young tax calculator, pretty easy to use. So let's get into it and let's talk about the tax brackets in Ontario. Now, before we start talking about the tax brackets, we have to talk about the basic personal amount. So this is something where, uh, you know, the federal government and each province sets a number where they say, look, we're going to set a basic personal amount that says, we believe that people need this much money to survive, have food, clothing, and shelter. Every single individual in the province needs this much money to survive and live off of. And so we're not gonna tax you on that income. However, this comes back to you in a tax credit. So you don't actually have to pay any tax on this amount, but the, you know, the brackets don't show that you're not paying taxes there. So, but you actually aren't. So in Ontario, the basic personal amount is $11,141. So that means that the Ontario government is suggesting to you that as long as you make $11,141, you should be able to afford to live in their province, which I think is absolute horseshit, if you ask me. Uh, obviously, they're suggesting that minimum wage needs to be $15 an hour in order for you to be able to survive 
and that works out to $30,000 a year. So how come the basic personal amount isn't $30,000 a year? Or at least what CERB was, which was $2,000 a month, because they know that's what Canadian citizens at least need to get by and sort of survive. But they don't do that in, in the tax bracket scenario. Uh, the federal basic personal amount is 14398 So basically, on 0 to 11141 you're going to pay 0 in tax because you're going to get a tax credit. And now anything above 11141 the Ontario government is going to start taxing you 5.05%. Now, uh, in between that and 14398 that's all you're paying. And then anything on top of that, now the federal government is going to bring in its lowest tax bracket, which is 15%. So you combine the two, now you're owing 20.05% on anything above 14,398. And that goes all the way up to 46,226. So between 14,398 and 46,226, you're gonna be paying 20.05% on that chunk of money. Uh, over 46,226 up to 50,197, you're gonna owe 24.15% on that chunk. Uh, over 50,197 up to 81,411, you're gonna pay 29.65 on that chunk. I'm going to get into an actual calculation in a second, but I guess I'll just run through this. It's just as annoying for me as it is for you, I assume. So over 81,411 uh, <clears throat> up to 92,454, you're going to owe 31.48% on that chunk. Over 92,454 up to 95,906, so like just a useless tax bracket, you're going to owe 33.89%. So something the Alberta government used to do, which was sweet, is they just had a flat rate of 10%. So we only had to know what the federal brackets were, and there weren't like 800 brackets because the provinces and the federal government never matched them. That's why there's these stupid brackets where it's like, what the hell's happening? Why are you charging me an extra 2% on that two grand? So over 95,906, up to 100,392, you're paying 37.91%. Over 100,392, up to 150,000, you're paying 43.41%. And this is where I'm gonna get into my explanation about somebody that's making $120,000 because they're probably telling you that they're like, it sucks that I make $120,000 because I owe 43.41% on my money because I went up into this new tax bracket, but they don't know anything about what they're talking about. And that's not actually the tax that they're paying. They're only paying that percent on that chunk. So that's something that really needs to get sort of beat into people's heads because it's not like all of a sudden when you go up into a new tax bracket that every dollar you made before is going to be taxed at that rate. So over 150,000 up to 155,625, you're paying 44.97%. Almost done. Over 155,625 up to 220, you're paying 48.35%, getting very high now. Over 220 up to 221,708, another useless tax bracket. You're paying 49.91%. And then anything over 221,708, you're paying 53.53%. 53 
So Ontario has one of the highest top marginal tax brackets in the country, over 53.53% on any money that you're making, over $221,708 is pretty substantial. So you think about, for example, let's say, you know, Austin Matthews gets a contract that's $10 million and, you know, Connor McDavid gets the same contract in Alberta that's $10 million. Now, basically, the first $200,000 that they make doesn't really matter. Ontario's got a top, top tax rate of 53.53%, and Alberta has one at 49. So it's 4.5% on basically $10 million works out to, you know, $450,000 in additional tax that Austin Matthews would have to pay. So, I mean, I don't really want Austin Matthews on the Oilers. Uh, I mean, I guess we'd take him, but I think I would take, you know, Nylander's contract or something. Anyway, so let's get into somebody that's making $120,000 and look how much actual tax that they pay. So, like I said, between zero and 11,141, you don't owe anything, you get a tax credit back for that. Between 11,141 and 14,398, you're paying 5.05%. So that chunk is $3,257 times 5.05% is $164.48 on that chunk. So between 14,398 and 46,226, you're paying 20.05%. So that's a big bracket. There's $31,828 being taxed at 20.05%. So on that chunk, you're paying 6,381 and 51 cents. So remember, it doesn't matter if you make 50 grand or you make 500 grand on the first $46,226 that any human being makes, that's what they're paying. So you just have to understand that. It, everybody is equal. You just start paying more on the chunks that are like the higher income. So between 46226 and 50197 you're paying 24.15% on that $3,971, so that's $959. Bucks. Keep going, 50197 to 81411 you're paying 2965 on that $31,214 chunk. So you're paying $9,254.95 on that chunk. Between 81411 and 92454, you're paying 31.48%. So $11,043 times 31.48% is equal to 3,476.34. I'm almost done. Uh, 92,454 to that 95,906, you're paying 33.89% on that $3,452 chunk. So uh, 1,169.88 on that little bracket there. And then 95,906 to 100,392, uh, you're paying 37.91% on that chunk of 4486 so you're paying $1,764. Now you make $120,000. So between $100,392 and $120,000, that's $19,608. And you're paying 43.41% on that chunk of money which is $8,511.83. So that is your marginal tax rate. That's your marginal tax rate because that's the highest bracket that you land in. So your marginal tax rate, if you make $120,000, is 43.41. If you make, let's say, 
$40,000, your marginal tax rate is 20.05% in Ontario. But now let's look and let's actually add this up because now it's not so bad for somebody that's making $120,000. And I'm not saying that the government doesn't tax people to hell. But uh, what I am saying is that it's not quite as bad as it seems in most people's minds. So on all, if you add all of those chunks up, you're paying $31,618.63 in tax to Ontario and the federal government on $120,000 worth of income. So that works out to exactly 26%. So your average tax rate, if you make $120,000 in Ontario, is 26%. You are not paying 43.41% on every dollar that you make. You have to make like a lot of money in order for you to be, you know, averaging the highest tax rate of 53.53% because basically that first $220,000 that you make is not taxed at that because it's an average of all of them. So this is the baseline, basically, in my opinion, for all of financial planning, is understanding these tax brackets, because then we can understand how to effectively incorporate tax planning into our financial plans, because tax planning is super important, because it's something that we can actually control. We can't actually control our returns. We can try and increase them by doing certain things, but we can control how our investments are taxed. We can control our tax savings with RSP contributions. We can invest in our TFSAs and not have to pay tax on those things. Uh, we can withdraw in retirement at a tax effective or efficient manner and a whole bunch of other scenarios that really, really matter. So this is the baseline that I think everybody really needs to understand before you can even start considering anything else. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. I know it's kind of a pain to go through all those numbers and look at all that stuff, but it does take some time to actually get it sort of beaten into our heads to say, oh, like the light bulb went off, Eureka, that's fantastic. Now I understand. Now let's keep moving forward. We can understand, you know, how capital gains work. So I'm going to do a video right away on, you know, how you can calculate your crypto potential gains or losses or whatever that might be. This is going to help us understand what our RSP contributions are actually going to do for us and a whole bunch of other things. So thank you guys very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We love hearing from you in the comments as long as it's fairly positive. And uh, thank you very much. Go oil. Uh, go oil. Uh, oil. <laughs> I can't even talk. They got slaughtered tonight, so that was rough. Thank <laughs> you.